Can you hear me at the back? Yes? Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I would like to introduce um, Zbigniew Otwita to the school. Actually, Zbigniew has been here before. He gave a talk about two years ago? Three. Three years ago. And ever since then, uh, we have discussed the possibility of coming and doing some work in the building. Which it, and it's taken three years, possibly more, to figure out how we might go about doing that. Um, and you'll see a bit later on why it's taken quite so long. Um, I'm just going to read the introduction to uh, the project that he proposed for uh, the A8, uh, which also, also outlines his research. The project's biological habitat acts as a crossover between architecture, art, engineering, biological, and space sciences. The general subject of the research is to create the conditions for the development of habitat a, as a kind of architectural bioreactor. For this reason, this research examines dynamic systems that transfer information and energy through liquid medium. Using biological polymers as building materials, the research approaches the development of liquid, jelly-like, and rigid membranes as a, at a human scale under different gravitation conditions, gravitation conditions, on Earth, under the water, and in space. Membranes are used as scaffolding for the growing of tissues and as biological fabricators for breeding of hybrid plantimal objects. Plantimal is my favorite word of the week, I have to say. Um, I will briefly, because I, I first came across uh, the big of at Archelab in uh, Orléans, just outside Paris, um, about five years ago. Uh, and um, it's Archelab, for those who don't know it, has an amazing collection of contemporary, mostly from the 1950s to uh, current uh, work by um, architects working today. Uh, they have a large collection of models and projects, and they also organize an annual event where they bring new work together. And each year or every two years, whenever they decide to arrange it, uh, they ask somebody to create that Archelab. And the year that I was there, uh, Bart Lutzner had uh, brought together various architects' um, work, of which Zbigniew was one. And uh, I can honestly say I don't remember any of the other work at all, and I think I probably should have, but I only remembered Zbigniew's work, thinking this is something I have really never seen before, and I don't really know what it is, um, but it looks quite interesting, and it resonated with me uh, very particularly in the kind of architectural canon, and coincidentally with the work of Archigen, uh, particularly. Uh, today, I guess some of you today were here at lunchtime where... Um, some of that work was discussed. Uh, but the particular projects, so one called The Story of the Thing by Mike Webb and David Green, which is a series of three photographs um, of a spaceman sort of walking on a kind of Meccano-like structure uh, which started to disintegrate and then they walked into space. So they were sort of supported into an anti-gravitational uh, environment with the help of some kind of structure, and in 1963 that was Meccano. Um, and then another project of David Green's called Spray House, which is in a sort of forerunner to Living Pod, which clearly when you see some of the big Nibs work was obviously the image that was very clear in my mind, although uh, very determined by the technology of that time. David's technology was, uh, he was looking at the systems that the Canadian Army were using which were a kind of spinning of, fab of uh, fiberglass which made um, sort of pod structure. Uh, so these were sort of things that, that certainly sprang to my mind and then the work of Buckminster Fuller who was clearly looking at um, uh, our uses of resources on the planet and uh, people who were thinking about very practical uh, things uh, but at the same time massively having, having a very big vision about what that might be, and I don't mean utopian or visionary, but they had vision and they were always looking at what the possibilities of those things might be. Um, so I certainly, when I first saw Zbigniew's work, thought of it in that context, a very architectural context. Um, but the medium in which he worked, which is uh, bio a biological, he will obviously talk about that in more detail, 
um, is, mo uh, is obviously the more, our more modern preoccupation uh, or engineering preoccupation of biological sciences. Um, and so in that context, Vigneva is now more well known as what he calls the group of wet, uh, belonging to a group of wet artists. And I thought that was a technical term. He now tells me, no, that's not the right translation. Anyway, it seems quite apt to me. Uh, the wet artists are people like um, Orlin and uh, Symbiotica and people working in that realm. And there's a, an exhibition on right now which um, uh, called Skin for Faces uh, in Luxembourg, which was previously in Liverpool and is now in Luxembourg, of which uh, Zbigniew is a part of this group. But the difference is they are all artists and he is the only architect working with this medium. And that is why he is here. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say, other than um, what he's been doing. Is, well, we've been here all week. We've been down in the basement of 16 Morwell Street, which is the building next door, and um, working with a group of students who have been are now fantastically dedicated. It took a while to get to get there, but anyway, we're all very. Uh, we've made a major breakthrough today, so that was very good. Um, and it's it's very difficult working with one a medium, one a uh, and a technology that you really is is really very unfamiliar. Uh, is not operated with a mouse. Uh, involves quite a lot of water mechanics. Uh, very delicate things and very heavy things. Um, anyway, they've all been amazing. And well, I would like to invite all of you to come tomorrow at one o'clock. There will be a presentation in the laboratory that we have now made um, in 16 basement of 16 Morwell Street. Um, to come and have a look at that work. Um, and and the, the context of that work here now is important because I think the ambition is that because of Zbigniew is an architect, the, the, the mod the, you'll see more of the work, but it's about getting bigger. He's trying a problem of scale and brevity. These are the two things that one is dealing with constantly. And so these objects need to keep getting bigger in order to explore what the implications of those things are. So um, this is absolutely a kind of first phase workshop for us to get familiar with the technology uh, so that we can then make something much bigger somewhere else, out there, possibly. Anyway, I will pass you over to the group. Um, thank you very much, Samantha. Thank you for invitation and uh, thank you for coming. Um, I was studying uh, Warsaw, uh, Warsaw Polytechnic, study architecture, and uh, um, and uh, uh, in the seventies, uh, biological uh, habitat was a part of my diploma as well. Um, and um, since that time, I am working on this vision, vision of biological future, which is totally opposite what our planet or tell our technology is uh, is running. Um, it is the question if, uh, if it is possible that life, which normally occur in a very small nanoscale, can happen in big scale and in mega scale, in architectural scale. Um, I don't know if it is possible. Uh, I try to, to have access to this. I try to uh, find a way um, which is uh, um, just totally new. It is like achievements. All, all it needs time to, uh, to work on it because uh, working with living matter, with living organisms needs time. And, uh, we don't have that. Um, maybe in the beginning, I will show two short films about this technology, about this technique. But maybe in the beginning, a um, few main, few crucial <laughs> points. So our civilization, our technology, all that we are doing, we are using rigid materials, dead materials, we are putting it together, and we have uh, objects, devices, buildings. So we produce this part of this building somewhere in the world, we are transported all over the planet, putting together, and we have on the end, for example, car. So it is the technology what we normally have from outside. We created something in our head, uh, 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 make a draw, make a draw, make a drawings, and then we um, put
putting stuff together, materials together, and to construct it together. This is totally different as nature is doing, as living organisms are doing, they are doing, because they have all information inside storage in DNA. So for two lovers in Norway, they don't need any connection to internationally, um, uh, uh, internationally um, 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 uh, world. They, um, they make love and they have baby. Or even if, for example, one seed is falling from the ground in somewhere in the world, um, have all to grow, uh, to grow and to develop. So, so image the forms, the, uh, the shapes of living organisms. So they are absolutely independently, independently, and they are absolutely lo local. And locality is, uh, is uh, in evolution is a uh, is a main power of evolution because locality make diversity, and globality make only equalness everywhere the same. So, but we are have obsession just now with locality, and I try to work very local. I try to think very local, not like uh, Buck Mr. Puller said. Uh, uh, make local, local think global. Make local and think local, which, which is totally different, uh, different position. Um, so this, I, this uh, thinking um, um, uh, needs totally different way to work. I'm working with, with liquids, and the liquids don't allow to, to put stuff together. Liquids is a totally different uh, state of matter. And uh, we just now are running the workshop where we are using any mechanical uh, tools to develop the form. We are using a liquid, we are using maybe, maybe soft balloons, we are using pressure of the air, we are using temperature of ice, and observe how we can, uh, how we can, how we can um, work with processes from the liquid state over jelly-like state to the rigid state. So. Um, and why we are doing this? B because liquid is as basic of life. Life, as we know, uh, occur in liquids. So if you want to think about architecture, living architecture, really not like a metaphor, not but in reality, we have to work with um, liquid matter. And um, this um, working as um, uh, to thinking about architects, uh, architecture or big scale of stuff in liquid is very difficult because it is impossible to build under gravitation conditions such a big space uh, directly from liquid. But one of the uh, exercises I met is how to handle, how to walk with water without vessel, without any, how to, how to walk is it? This is, this is essential to understand how liquids are, what is kind of matter they are. And we are trying to get it in a very simple way, but I think the direction is right, and uh, uh, we have a um, small result. Um, so maybe in the beginning I will show this film about technology, how I, um, how I try to, um, to work with liquid matter. It is like a compilation, different projects, and going um, from, um, um, from working with, with matter, then under different uh, conditions, gravitation conditions on the Earth, under the water, because under the water we have uh, some kind of weightlessness. It is, uh, it is really uh, great that we, in, on, the Earth, on the Earth, we have weightlessness, which we never used for creating a form. And then in uh, space, in zero gravity. And maybe after that, uh, what I'm going to show you, to understand more what I'm talking about. And uh, um, I commanded after after the film. This is a very short film, I think, six minutes.
atmosphere. We are building the houses. And um, membrane is also, it is the principle of the task of architecture to make membranes. But our membranes are walls, they are dead. They are, have any din dynamic itself, so they can grow, so, and they can also, they can't die. So the building, they can't die, so that we collect, we collect in all this, this um, um, devices, building, and we can produce without regulation. So idea is that to maybe grow the spaces that really, for a short time, that they, like living on organisms, they grow, they uh, derive, and they can be old, and they can die. Um, so, and uh, um, therefore, um, this working with, um, with, uh, uh, with the biological materials is very important. And uh, you see, that, for example, this huge swimming pool and um, huge balloon, what we made a few years ago, about three meters diameter with inside with a biological polymer. It was a mix of gelatin and agar in this case. Uh, we can build membrane which is very, very filmy. They have maybe few, few millimeters or one centimeter. And they, will, they have a different state of matter. They can be liquid in the beginning, and we can keep it if they are liquid, and then we can grow on it. Um, uh, uh, some organism, some plant, or there's some tissues. Or we can dry it and to have really rigid uh, shapes. It is like a bone. So the second film what I would like to show, it is um, my last project I'm working on. It's called Your, Pro Your Personal Biosphere. Um, the principle of this, uh, of this project, which is like a um, compendium of different ideas, is this membrane is not all. It is only like a, like a basic of, of life. I can imagine that in this membrane, there are some small bioreactors. They, um, and we can breed in this bioreactor, bioreactor some proteins, maybe for our life. So maybe, uh, maybe we can breed in different way, in new way to use technology, biotechnology to, to use um, um, genetic technology. And, uh, um, and prepare this. Uh, for, um, for experience. Um, I would like to... Uh, this is the second film what I would like to show and begin with some impression uh, from, the, from the place I was born. I was born. I was born in this part of Poland, very close to White Russia border, in a very simple village. And all uh, matter we use for, for building sites so is biological matter. This is, you see, and it's nothing new for you, but uh, what was very special, this place, and give, gave me in the last years to thinking about um, what I'm working on. It is a few pictures from, uh, from this village. And to have impression um, how it was uh, um, at the time I was a little child. We have no, we had no electricity, and uh, to produce some energy for, uh, for example, for simple machine, I used this kind of, this kind of device. It is two horses was going around and produce uh, energy for simple machine in the barn, um, and it was. Um, I was born on the um, uh, farm of my grandfather. It was, we had, uh, at the time, three hectare lands, land, and we were living, I think, eight, uh, it was eight persons. Uh, my parents, my grandparents, and four children. And um, at that in that time, I was young, we were nearly autonomous. We buy, of course, things in the shops, but normally we produce nearly all for our own use. And, uh, uh, um, that was, um, that was very local systems. It's, uh, for my research, it's very important to think about. This was, was also like a compendium of cultural. It was a chapel on, the, on the, this uh, place. It was an old cemetery, and it was a river where I was uh, fishing as a child. 
and um, even until now, this is the picture from last year, from last winter. The, the people take leaves, and for the winter, they put around like a, like a pullover um, to keep warm the buildings. A very, I think it's very intelligent, a very ecological way. Uh, so um, it is a big value. It is very simple uh, uh, life, and this village is dying slowly but surely. But for me, what was very important, this lo local situation. And uh, when we're speaking about locality, um, this uh, may be um, important to know what uh, about, to talk about ecological footprint. Ecological footprint is the measure how much land we need if you want to keep our state of life, our, our standard of life. So um, if you have much money and if you spend so much and use so much energy, you, you need so much uh, resources. And uh, if you calculate in a so-called global hectares, you need uh, much land to produce all uh, what you need. And for example, in America, you need uh, 10 hectares land only for you. It is your personal part of this country. So one American needs 10 hectares. In Europe, it's about 6 hectares. And I was calculate how much I needed in my village. It was uh, 0 0.8. So I was, my, my, my uh, footprint was great, very, very low. Of course, it was very simple uh, life. But um, idea is maybe what I saw, maybe to show this, this land what I need to live, like a sphere. So I was calculating how big will be sphere if I, if I fold it to the biosphere to, and, and have inside of this landscape what I need. So a uh, USA, you have, a, you have a bio, your personal biosphere, which is about 180 meters diameter. And mine, very small village, is about 50 meter, what I needed at the time. Um, so, and I, so maybe my land, I would like to, I like to fold it to the, to the sphere and to want to, want to live inside and maybe to shrink it to the using new technologies that is very very small, and um, this is uh, this is idea what I have. Of course, it is like a like a thinking construction. It is uh, so. This is a picture. One American needs so much space. Uh, to live, and um, uh, so it is about 160 um, 60 meter. This biosphere, this personal biosphere, um, and this coming to idea house like bioreactor. So can you imagine? Uh, can you imagine this membrane where I have talked about? It is um, around me. It is liquid, maybe maybe jelly, maybe rigid. And I can eat it. I can live with it, uh, with it, and uh, uh, it is part of my body, and uh, it's biological. Uh, and I have maybe some kind of bioreactor in this membrane that produce proteins. Maybe w I don't need a uh, victim of of victims of animal and plant to live. So, and uh, if I if I shrink it to to the to the to the size really I need for for life. Uh, maybe it is idea for the future. Of course, it is only thinking idea. Um, it is, but it is very important to be very autonomous and nearly egoistic. So only like a, like a many brains about many brains or different person to build maybe some cluster of the of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, uh, personal biospheres. So it is one piece of what I did. In, um, that I'm, I can be inside of that, and I, it is edible. I can I can eat it, and um, normally for uh, for uh, walking in the laboratories, we need this. We use these petri dishes, some plastic uh, plastic dishes. We are putting agar inside, just jelly, uh, and we uh, we grow inside different plants. So what about if we if we make from this? From this agar, from this uh, jelly sphere, in in which, like a point, you see this some some bacteria are growing in, inside, and if we can make it in big scale, it will be maybe step in the right direction. That's what are doing in 
um, Botanical Institute in Cologne, in the University of Cologne, and what we did yesterday or before yesterday here in, uh, in the school. This point there are seeds inside in the camera, uh, which is showing, uh, showing uh, how they grow uh, later. So it is close ecosphere, close world inside, allowed that we can regulate all these processes inside. And um, the next step to a little bit grow, go in the in direction of, um, of uh, different gravity conditions, um, it is, um, I construct a so-called clinostat, which is an instrument um, that, we can, uh, that is possible to, um, to uh, simulate weightlessness. It is, you know it from space science, um, and it is two frames that work uh, turning to two axes. And inside of these bioreactors, the plants don't know where up is when down, and they grow in a special way. It is for, in science, it's quite a um, known uh, method to prove how the plants are grow. This is an uh, exhibition in Luxembourg just now, going exhibition in Luxembourg. And this, after, after a few days, we have this result. Uh, that's what, not, not really what we wanted, but, but it is uh, some plant plants were growing inside. Just now I have changed, we have like a real like a jungle in the, such a, um, um, in a such a biosphere, such a bioreactor. Idea is also to go further that to use maybe water which is um, which is um, basic of life and um, to create such bubbles, water bubbles and use it for life inside. And it is, uh, of course, impossible because of gravity. Maybe it is possible water in water, um, so, um, or water in a space. This is uh, exercises from space science. American astronaut Don Petit made uh, uh, in uh, ISS. This water experience. droplets in a bubble in a sphere. Here we have a sphere of water, 75 millimeters in diameter, with an air bubble inside, about 35 millimeters in diameter, and we inject water droplets anywhere from 1 to 8 millimeters in diameter into the bubble and look at the resulting collision dynamics where they collide with each other and the walls. Most of the collisions result in an elastic collision, but every once in a while a collision will result in a mass transfer across the interface and this mass transfer has a momentum exchange associated with it, which will propel the droplets. Here a droplet is going in circular motion on the inside of the sphere until a mass transfer occurs and propels it off the surface. So, imagination of this universal princip princip principle of, of, of membrane in different state, in different scale, that is a um, um, subject of my work. And maybe in the future we can uh, launch in a space, not me metal um, construction, but uh, soft uh, liquid uh, um, systems and with life inside.
gravity because uh, if we're working, so work is material, we know things. The only time we have to know that you have to do this kind. So um, there are different methods to create membranes. And membranes, I feel, membranes is crucial in this. It's a universal idea of to close some system or to make a border between surrounding and the sides. So it is task of architecture. And uh, while using this uh, for this membrane, while using soft liquid technologies to build very soft membranes, very very thin membranes, we are putting in, in different uh, shapes and different. Uh, we are using balloons. We are using by putting it also in water and observe how material behaves. And it is not that we are creating the form because um, the materials look itself, they look itself themselves for the best uh, shape. So we are start to be observant the way it looks to create and to force the form to observe how it is and uh, and uh, Thank you for coming. Thank you.